Section twenty four point six: How different are localized and delocalized bonding models? Barium hydride is a linear molecule that belongs to the D infinity H point group. So on top, you see the delocalized symmetry adopted molecular orbitals. This is bonding orbital. The symmetry is sigma g. This is anti-bonding orbital with a symmetry of sigma u. These two are localized mo. In this two mo orbitals, beryllium first mix its two s orbital and one of the two p orbitals to form two sp hybrid orbitals. And then beryllium uses these two hybrid orbitals to form two bonds, two localized bonds with the two hydrogen atoms. So over here, you can see this is one of the sp plus minus one of the sp hybrid orbitals on beryllium interferes with this one s. Orbit of the hydrogen atom in a constructive manner. So you have a bond here. This is a sigma bond between beryllium and the hydrogen on the left. Similarly, this is another bond, another sigma bond between this beryllium and the hydrogen on the right. So now you can clearly see on top the amos return the symmetry of the molecule. On the bottom, there is no such symmetry. On top, the bonding orbital is delocalized over the entire molecule, so you see significant contribution from all three atoms. And the same here. However, in here, localized MO, you see this MO is localized between beryllium and the hydrogen on the left. This one between beryllium. And the hydrogen on the right. So first, I want to say molecular orbitals are simply mathematical functions used to describe the wave functions of this、um, electrons. Localized and delocalized molecular orbitals can be converted to each other because they are linear combinations of each other. There are also linear combinations of atomic orbitals. So again, I want to emphasize that in quantum mechanics or quantum chemistry, a wave function does not have any physical meaning. So when you're looking at the mo's or eos, they may not have any physical meaning at all. However, if you take the squared modulus of the total wave function of all electrons. That will give you the electron density distribution. So basically, you need to construct a determinantal wave function of all the valence valence electrons, and then take the squared modulus of it. You will get the electron density, and you can use this delocalized mo or localized mo. You will end up with the same electron density distribution. Uh, now let's further compare the delocalized symmetry adopted MOs and the localized MOs. The delocalized symmetry adopted MOs are the eigenfunctions of the approximate Schrödinger equation for individual electrons that occupy this MO. So it's possible to determine the MO energies and the total energy of the molecule at the same time. So it's possible to make MO energy diagram of this symmetry adapted delocalized MOs. They are also called canonical MOs. We can use these MOs to estimate the ionization energy, electron affinity, and excitation energy of the molecule. For example, if you look at the HOMO energy, 
it's just negative ionization energy. If you look at the lumo energy, well, it just corresponds to the electron affinity. The homo lumo gap is approximately the excitation energy of the molecule. The main drawback of using the localized, uh, localized MO is, well, we cannot make predictions of the ionization energy, electron affinity, or excitation energy of the molecule using the localized MO. We are able to do that with the delocalized symmetry adopted MO, but not with localized MO. However, the localized MO has its own advantages. If you would like to study the breaking or formation of just a single bond, so for example, in methane, if you are just interested in breaking one of the four bonds, it's more advantageous to just use the localized MO so that you can focus on the breaking CH bond. This is more efficient and sometimes more accurate in quantum chemistry or computational chemistry.